Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Manny Lopez here. This is PLS Tips, and today we're going to learn objections and rebuttals. So let's get started. I believe we are created for greatness, not mediocrity. That we are to live our lives accordingly, striving to be agents of change as we attempt to leave this world a better place than we All right, so here's what we're going to do. So what I like to, you know, let people know that whenever you're looking at presenting your offer, whether it's getting people to sign up for the power lead system, your own primary business, any type of sales, you're going to come across objections. You're going to come across people that say stuff like, uh, I need to think about it. Um, I have a partner I need to talk to, or you have a spouse I need to talk to. I have, um, you know, monetary restrictions, I can't afford it, whatever it is that they come up with, you're going to have to deal with this consistently, no matter what type of sales environment you're in. So here in this video, I'm going to share with you my five-step method to handling objections. Now let's go right here at the top here from what you can see in the video. With every call, a sale is made. Whether you sold the client on your program or the client sold you on why they didn't buy from you today. Now, pretty much every call is going to have at least one objection, if not more. The most successful salespeople have rebuttals ready for every objection that comes up. There's not many objections out there, and you'll start to hear the same objections again and again. These rebuttals will help you overcome the objection to get to the real reason they don't want to buy from you today, or will lead you to uncover that there really is no objection at all, so you'll be able to make the sale. Now, statistically speaking, in order to get the sale, you'll need to ask for the order at least five times. This means that you'll first, you'll have to have rebuttals ready to overcome these objections that will come your way if you want to be successful. The first step in overcoming an objection is to isolate it. So here's a step-by-step -step process to isolating the objection. So what you guys see on your screen here, uh, this is actually a part of a pitch book that I put together for one of my... Uh, programs and the companies that I work with. So all I'm going to give you is, uh, as you see here at the bottom, page 9 of 18. <laughs> so all you're getting today, guys, is one of these pages, but it's the only one you're going to need to actually go through because the rest of the book is actually scripted responses. So here's an example, like getting past the gatekeeper. I give you a bunch of responses. Um, but here, we're just going to cover this page, objections and rebuttals, because all you need to understand right now is the five-step method, okay? Right here, five-step method to handling the objection. So step one, let's, let's just do it small by small. Okay, so step one is in two parts, A and B. The first thing you got to do is you got to hear them out completely. So if somebody is trying to give you an objection and saying, well, you know what, I, I really need to think about it or I need to talk to my partner about it, don't interrupt them, right? Just let them talk. Let them give you everything that they want to tell you about why they are not moving forward because the more they talk, the more they're going to give you uh, as far as ammunition in your uh, battle here of who's going to win. <laughs> you want to kind of put it in a, in a you know, visual sense. Ah, getting some water. All right. Step two, or not step two, but part B of step one is put in a softening statement. So here's some examples. I put a couple in here. Um, I completely understand how you feel. Uh, some of my best clients felt that way also. I completely understand how you feel. This is a big decision right now, and I'm sure it makes sense for you to fill in the blank, right? Think about it. Talk to your partner, whatever it is. Step two is you want to question and isolate the objection before you answer it, okay? Now, here's an example. Uh, somebody's talking to you, and they tell you, I need to think about it. And then if you didn't isolate it, if you skip step two, and you just go straight into trying to answer the objection, then what will happen is, is after you answer it and you've overcome it, because most of the times it's just a smoke screen, they're going to give you another objection. Oh, well, I also need to talk to my partner. About oh, I also needed this. Oh, I also needed this. So you got to isolate it. So here's an example of how you do that, where they say, I want to talk to my partner. So you say something like, I understand whatever the name is. Now, let me ask you a question. Assuming this was solely your decision, you'd be starting with us today, right? Right? So... Something like that would basically isolate it. It would say, so if, you know, this was solely your decision, you didn't have a partner, if this was not a problem, we'd be starting, right? Right? So that would be a very good way to isolate it. You just want to make sure that, so if this was not an issue, whether they say, I need to think about it. All right, so let's say you thought about it. You've gotten all the things. Is there anything else that's stopping you from moving forward? 
right? Is there anything else that's causing reluctance? Some simple like that. Uh, the next thing is you want to, or here's some good question techniques. So before we go into step three. So just to clarify my thinking, what do you mean when you say fill in the blank, right? I need to think of that. I need to talk to my partner. Uh, and you can say, hey, I see, out of, you know, I see out of, out of curiosity, why, why is that important to you? So you, these are more ways to dive deeper into that objection that they're giving, right? They say, I want to talk to my partner. All right, so what, what do you mean when you say you need to bring this to your partner? Is it something that they have to agree to, they have to give the decision on? Is it something you jointly do it? You know, you want to get the flow, the, the insight. You don't want to just go, okay, cool, that makes sense, <laughs> right? You want to really give, you know, the, um, what would you just call it? You want to give the know-how that says, you know what, I, I understand how you feel. Let, let's, let's dive a little deeper, okay? Uh, step three is you want to answer the objection. Now, scripted response. I put this in here because in this book, there's a bunch of scripted response. I'm not going to give you all of them, right? I've got it here. I'm not interested. Boom, a bunch of things where I'm not interested. Uh, but this is not promoting, um, this is specifically promoting my own program, so it wouldn't make sense for you guys to see all the answers. Um, so you got to come up with your own scripted responses, right? You have your own business model. So let's say, here's an example. You go and you say, okay, well, um, I need a scripted response. So you're selling the power lead system. So when they say, I need to think about it, or I have a partner, you can have a scripted response that answers that objection, right? That overcomes that objection. You give your reasoning to why it's a better decision for them to move forward now versus going through all the extra hoops of whatever it is that they're trying to put up as an objection. So here's an example, okay? Because a lot of people may think, well, well man, give me some examples. I, I, you know, Using a scripted response, that's not gonna give me the secret sauce. <laughs> so let's say you're talking about the power lead system. They say, you know what, I wanna think about it, right? So you can say stuff like, you know, I completely understand why you'd wanna think about it. A lot of people I talk to, they tell me the same thing. Uh, sometimes it's because I, you know, maybe give too much information up front. Sometimes I don't give enough information, right? Uh, but before you answer that, um, give me an idea. I mean, if, if you had already kind of thought about it or let's say outside of thinking about it, is there anything else that's stopping you from moving forward, right? Ask them a simple question like that. Um, the idea is you want to get them to understand that you understand them. That's why I kind of repeated stuff. And then ask them a question of, is there anything else that's stopping you from moving forward? If, you know, we didn't have to think about it, is there any other issues? Is there any other things stopping us from doing business? Uh, they should say, if that was the only objection, no, 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 everything's good. I just need a couple days to think about it, and then I, I can make a decision. You say, okay, perfect, not a problem. Now, just to clarify my thinking, you know, when you say you want to think about it, um, let me just kind of share with you some statistics here and you can pull this up. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is, but you can Google this. Um, I use this all the time. Um, there is a study that came out, a psychology, well, I don't think it was a college or some university that came out and showed that just by thinking about it within 24 hours, you've lost 25% of the conversation. Okay. Within 48 hours, you've lost 50% of the conversation. So you thinking about it for two days will mean you have just forgotten, no matter how much you've written down and, and all that stuff, you've forgotten at least 50% of what I've explained to you today. Now, have you read the book, Think and Grow Rich? No, some people yes, some people no. But in the book, the idea is, is made early 1900s and Andrew Carnegie is one of the richest men in the world. Think of him like the Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates of today. And he uh, had gotten approached by a guy by the name of Napoleon Hill. And Andrew Carnegie gave him an offer that says, hey, I want you to work for me for free. I will fly you all around the world to meet influential people and hear their stories of success. Now, will you take this offer? You're going to be investing 20 years of your life. <laughs> I mean, think of that kind of offer. Um, now, Andrew Carnegie in the back of his mind, had a time ticking when he gave that offer. And Napoleon Hill took 29 seconds to say, I accept your offer. 29 seconds, okay? And here's exactly what uh, Andrew Carnegie told him right after that. He said, you know what? If you would have taken longer than 60 seconds to make a decision, I would have withdrawn that offer. Because for a man who has been presented with all of the facts, 
who has everything explained. I, I can't remember the exact verbiage. I, I usually have it really well down. But the idea of the, the concept is, look, once a man has been presented with all the facts, if he cannot come to a decision promptly, once presented with these facts, he cannot be counted on to follow through on any decision he should make. So Andrew Carnegie would make it a very specific requirement. He wouldn't tell him, but he'd give him 60 seconds to make a decision. If they can't make a decision within 60 seconds because he's presented the entire offer and the opportunity with all the facts, he says, you know, I wouldn't have done business with you. I would have taken the offer away because if you can't make a decision promptly, once presented with all the facts, you can't be counted on to follow through on any decision you should make. And I think you should apply that in your business, in your circle, because the people that are going to do well on your team are the action takers, are the ones when you say, here's the offer, here's the opportunity, what do you think? And, or, you know, how do you want to move forward? Does that make sense? You know, there's a ways to close the sale. I'm going to go over that. We're only in step three right now. But go in here and then being able to understand what you can do in this space to really bring value to that situation. So let's let's continue on here. So you have a scripted response, which is basically what I did is come up with two to three different responses for everything. So if somebody says, I have a partner to talk to you, well, I tell them, here's an example of what I say. After I've gone through and isolated the objection, now I'm into the scripted response, step three, I go in something like this. Well, you know, you have a partner and I completely value having your partner's opinion on this. Now, you know your partner better than I do. What would you say your partner needs to know about our program to make an educated decision? What, you know, what do we need to do to get them to say yes? And here's what that is doing. What this is doing is taking that prospect from the other side of the table and bringing them to your side of the table, to where you've got their partner on the other side of the table, and now it's you and their partner saying, here's why we need to move forward, because the partner knows the partner better than you do, better than you ever will. Most times, the partner is an opposite. Right? You're going to have somebody who is super excited about moving forward, and then you talk to the partner who is completely not excited. Right, He's very skeptical. Right, You guys have probably come across this many times. So you have to get the partner you're talking to, the one that's already sold on it, to say, well, what do we need to do? You know your partner. What do they need to hear to make them say yes? Right, And so this way you can become the solution instead of trying to just regurgitate every little feature and benefit of your program, and they're just like, oh, this guy sounds salesy, right? You don't wanna do that. You just wanna come in with the solution to the challenge the partner has that says, all right, that's gonna make sense. All right, let's move forward, all right? So those are some, just a couple of them you guys could use. So step four uh, is confirm your answer, okay? Once you've given them the scripted response, you've gotta clarify that you've overcome the objection. Does that answer that for you? Does that make sense? Have I satisfied that concern? Does that seem fair? Right? Any one of those are perfect uh, confirm your answer um, structures or examples. Right. So again, let's recap. Step one is you got to hear them out completely. You put in a softening statement. I completely understand how you feel. Some of my clients felt exactly the same way you do. Don't even sweat it. Okay. Then you got to isolate the objection. So outside of wanting to think about it, outside of wanting to talk to your partner, is there anything else that's stopping you from moving forward, right? You know, the numbers make sense. Everything's good, right? Yeah, 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 that makes sense. So would you have isolated how you can answer? Now, if they've given you more than one objection, you literally are going to have to, in step three, answer the objection each separately, right? You've got to separately isolate and overcome the objection. So for example, if they give you two, like I want to think about it and I can't afford it, then you say... Okay, well, here's, you know, you isolate it. And you know, it's just those two. So you go into one first. All right, so you say you want to think about it. Now, let me give you some quick information, right? And then you go into that story or you go into this, the stats, whatever way it works for the customer or for you. And then you make sure you've overcome that objection. Does that make sense? They're going to go, yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah, I don't want to forget 50% and have to have to repitch me again. That, that just, that's not fun. So... Right there, you overcome that one. All right, now you said that you, you've also can't afford it. Now, now you go into some script of responses there. Now, I'm not going to give you those because in the interest of time here, we want to keep this short. Um, now, step five, once you have confirmed your answer because you've overcome the objection with a great response, that doesn't sound robotic, of course, so make sure you practice it, most likely memorize it. You got to ask for the sale, right? You got to ask them something like, 
So how do you want, oh, well, let me remove that because that does kind of include some of the stuff that I'm promoting in my business. So uh, the idea of step five is you ask for the sale. That's the answer. You're going to literally say, all right, so how do you want to move forward? All right, so how do you want your name, you know, what email do you want me to use for your welcome email, for your, your thank you, your receipts, you know, whatever it is I use. What I like to do is, all right, so like if I'm using a program like Power Leads this, if I'm signing somebody up, what I would do is like, all right, so what email address are you going to be using? And then I'll just send them the link to get started. Uh, I never sign somebody up personally because uh, they have to do all that checking off of agreeing stuff. So always send them to the link and you can walk them through step by step. That's the most important thing. I see so many people fail when they just send over a link to sign up instead of saying, all right, so here's what we want you to do. We're on the phone now. Go here. I'm going to send you this link. Okay. Click on it. Most people can access the internet and talk on the phone at the same time. It's pretty standard across the board. So let click, you know, here I'm texting you my link to get started. Boom. They get started. Then you go ahead and all right, so put your email. It's going to bring you to another page. What do you see on that page? All right. It's going to tell you, all right, it gives me all the information. There to the Get them to describe what they're seeing. Don't describe it for them. Get them to describe it for you. But that way they, oh crap, I didn't. You know, so here's an example, right? They're saying they're signing up and sometimes they're not, right? We've had this happen before. So you send them a link. They're telling you they're signing up and you go, okay, what, what page are you on? Or what do you see on the page that you're on? And then they start describing it. And they're like, oh no, you got to click here. You got to click here. Oh, okay. Now I got to get to this page. So it's going to really help in the sign-up process if you can walk them through it. Now, you may have gone through this multiple times, but this is going to be your customer's first time that they're going through your process. So make sure that they understand it as simple as you were talking to a kindergartner, all right? So let's just do a quick recap, guys, so you understand my five-step method, five step method to handling objections. You've got step one, hear them out completely and put in a softening statement. Step two, question and isolate the objection. Step three is answer the objection. Step four is confirm your answer. And step five is ask for the sale. You got to get them to say yes. Once they are uh, on the board, then it's just assume the sale, guys. You got to literally, once they have said yes to you, then you just got to go into, all right, let's get it started then. And so many people just forget it right there. They just, you know, they say yes to move forward and they go, okay, and they just kind of wait and then nothing happens. You got to walk people through, guys. All right, so I hope this guys this video can help you guys. If it does, put it in the comments. What was the best thing that you learned about this? Or maybe you have a question or a concern, something that says, you know what, this didn't really make much sense, Manny. Clarify this a little bit. Just put it in the comments. Uh, you can click on the video, and obviously it goes right into the comments. You guys know how YouTube works. And I'll be uh, doing my best to answer those for you. And uh, let's see how we can help you guys out. So again, you know, this is completely free training, guys. You don't have to invest anything. You're already a Power Lead System member. This is completely at no cost. My goal here is to see you guys have success because so many times we're learning from people that are not getting the results that we want. I have multiple successful businesses. I'm a paid consultant to over a thousand brands worldwide. I've been named one of the best by Facebook. I've sold over a million dollars via one call phone calls. So you have to understand if you want to get results, you learn from people that are getting the results that you want. And if you obviously paid attention to this information, it's very valuable and I didn't ask you to pay a penny to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, just go and share the PLS tips page with your team uh, and you'll see the results your team will start getting. And, uh, and just hopefully you guys just get right to the top. So I'll see you guys on the next video next week. And always remember that you are too blessed to be stressed. Have a great day.